How's it going everybody? To those of you that are new here to my channel, my name is Austin and this is Fantastic Freaks. So whether if you're a big fish enthusiast like myself perhaps, or if you just want that one show tank in your house that just, uh, you know, it's a little conversation piece, one of the top tanks you may be recommended to or that I may recommend to you is a 55 gallon tank. With the 55, there are all sorts of possibilities of what you can do to put in these magnificent tanks. But in this video today, guys, I want to give you eight great fish ideas for a 55 gallon aquarium. The rule of thumb here is that I'm going to just name a pro and con, maybe two, of some of the fish here that I name in the list. Because honestly, if I gave you the whole care guide on every fish that I name on this list, this video would get quite extensive very quickly. But enough of me, let's get at it. Number one on my list is Exodon Tetras. Regardless of your knowledge or experience in the fish hobby, most of you should probably know what a piranha is. One of the downside of piranhas is how big they get. Piranhas, like especially the red bellies that are probably the most commonly known piranha, can grow up to 14 inches. But if a fish that has the stereotype of a piranha pleases you, the Exodon Tetra might just be what you're looking for. The Exodon Tetra, also known as Exodon Paradoxus, loves to swim in schools much like tetras and also piranhas in the Amazon River. One thing you can look forward to with this fish is that they are always swimming around. This is a very active fish. And I guess another thing you can look forward to with these guys, unlike the piranhas that I mentioned earlier can grow up to 14 inches, these guys usually max out somewhere between four to six inches, much more manageable in a 55 gallon tank. However, one downside to the Exodon Tetra is that they should definitely be kept as a species only tank. Any colorful or somewhat shiny fish will probably be bit and eventually killed by these guys as in the wild, they pick off the scales and eat the scales in the wild, which really makes other fish prone to diseases and all that if it doesn't just kill them right then and there. And if you look back at my previous feeding video where I gave these guys some blood worms, that'll be another pro for why these guys are sometimes known as the Exodon Piranhas. Number two on my list is angelfish. Yeah, I know, everybody suggests angelfish for 55 gallon tanks. I like to think there's a very good reason for that. And one of those reasons is just how they swim. While exodons are always moving around, angelfish can be the same way, but more in a different matter. I think angelfish, in my opinion, are very relaxing to see swim. And just like exodons though, they can be a great conversation piece. I mean, look at all that color in there and just how they group together. Is it not just majestic to look at? Or I guess in other ways you could say, angelic to look at. And you can see one of the pros right here is that you can put a group of them all together, even different species together, which is a good thing because another pro I would say is there are a lot of different species out there. I mean, there has got to be an angelfish out there, look wise, color wise, that is for you. I mean, in here by itself, I have over a handful of different kinds. We got platinums in here. As you can see, we got a black angel swimming right there. Right here, we got a blue Philippine looking at us as well as a Pinoy angel looking at us. We got a little blue marble down there. We got a smoky veil tail angel over there. Across the way from them, I have a koi angel fish here in my 75, as well as a veil tail marble angel fish. In summary, there has got to be a species of angelfish out there, if not a few to a handful, that'll suit your fancy and make that 55 gallon tank just absolutely shine. But alas, every fish has their flaw. One of the main flaws I would still say for angelfish is, especially if you put a group in there, you're gonna hire the likelihood of getting a breeding pair. And especially once they start laying eggs, angelfish can get very aggressive and territorial to protect their eggs. Maybe a school of angels isn't quite doing it for you. You can go ahead and use them as a centerpiece for a community tank. Rainbow fish is a great option with angelfish as are tetras. Be a little careful though with the tetras though. If you do something smaller like ember tetras or cardinal tetras, maybe neon tetras, 
once they start getting to the size of like my koi angel there, Gabriel, or my veil tail marble here, those tetras might end up coming missing down the road. Number three on this list is Amazon puffers. Surely you had to know I was gonna try to sneak a puffer on here somewhere, right? If you want a fish that is always moving around and has a lot of personality, an Amazon puffer may be a great fit for you. I currently have a trio of Amazon puffers and a 38 gallon tank. And while that would work okay for these guys for a little bit, you could put probably about two more, if not probably double that, six total in a 55 gallon with plenty of plant cover, rocks, wood and such. The positives is, well, it's a puffer fish. Everybody knows that a puffer fish is one of those that inflates itself if it feels threatened or is nearby predators. And regardless of where you are in the hobby, everyone hears the word puffer fish and they immediately get a somewhat of a vague picture of what that may look like in their mind. That and they're a very rewarding fish. They are very intelligent, thus they can recognize their owner or food bringer, I guess in their minds probably more so, uh, when you come up to the glass and sometimes will even greet you. They're also been around right now, probably trying to hunt or trying to figure out why I haven't given them food yet. But they also will recognize you through the glass too. But the downside with these fish, unlike any other fish that I have on this list, is that they require some very specific maintenance. Within their diet, you have to give them hard-shelled foods like snails, shrimp, small crayfish legs and such because they have continuously growing teeth that if you don't trim down, it can cause problems with them opening their mouth, which can eventually lead them to starvation. That, and unfortunately with all the fish that I have on this list, this is the fish that's probably the most fussy with its water parameters. You really gotta make sure their water is clean and pristine or they are more likely to get sick since they are a scaleless fish. Amazon puffers more specifically, it would be my recommendation to someone, hey, maybe you've done some other fish that required a little extra maintenance and all that before, and you're looking to maybe take a step up in the hobby, Amazon puffers may be that great thing. And especially if you can give them those hard shelled foods all the time that continuously grind down their teeth, this is gonna be a fish that rewards you for many years. I also have a care guide video on how to take care of Amazon puffers. If you want to learn more about this little fish, I'll go ahead and put the tag up here, somewhere. Number four on this list is a Tetra community tank. One plus I will say right off the bat with Tetras, compared to pretty much any other fish, except maybe one I'm gonna mention later here on this list, it's the fish that you can have the highest quantities or highest number of in a 55 gallon tank. Especially if you went with something like the classical Cardinal Tetra here, with some beautiful red and blue color here, and as you see, they're pretty compatible with some other fish, such as angelfish that I mentioned here earlier. You could also put a beta in with them as a centerpiece as another option. Like what Frozone has in here with uh, Emperor Tetras and Glass Bloodfin Tetras. Isn't that right, Frozone? Where's my super suit? And with very few exceptions, Tetras are one of those that pretty much get along with all sorts of species of Tetra. The couple kinds of Tetras I would say take caution with is the Buenas Aires Tetra. They get a little bit bigger than what most Tetras do, but otherwise, I mean, you can do Cardinal Tetras, Neon Tetras, uh, Glow Light Tetras, Serpe Tetras, Ember Tetras. Emperor Tetras are one of my favorites. There's Blue Tetras. There are all sorts of options out there that can give you all sorts of little fish with big color. But just as a friendly reminder, do not put Exodon Tetras in your Tetra community tank. It will not end well. Before we head on to number five here, I wanna give a quick little shout out to Fishy Biz Aquatics, who gave me this real awesome baseball style t-shirt here. And as you can see, looks really cool. Got the dark blue with the collar and the sleeves that I just showed you there a moment ago. So it looks awesome. It feels really great too. And I uh, wanna give a big shout out and thank you to him for this t-shirt that I won uh, a little while ago now. Um, those of you that are not familiar with Fishy Biz Aquatics, I'll go ahead and put his channel up here so you can check him out. Got some great content, great videos, has some really fun live streams as well where he asks some other fish tubers and other YouTubers some questions. A lot of fun stuff on his channel. So if you haven't checked him out, do yourself a favor and definitely go check him out. Another fantastic guy 
within the fish fam here. Let's get back to the fish. Number five on the list is rainbow fish. If you're looking for a fish that's pretty easy to keep like tetras, but you may think, well, tetras are too small or ah, everybody knows what a tetra is. Those are too basic for me. Well, may I introduce to you the rainbow fish, which is in my case, kind of like an upper class tetra, so to say. And while of course they're not directly related to tetras, much similar to tetras, rainbow fish have all sorts of color and are always moving about the tank here, as you see. While mine live here in a 75 gallon, you could probably fit probably about two groups of four very comfortably in there. Or hey, if you just want to get two of each, that's okay. These guys uh, get along very well with all sorts of different of their species, as well as other fish, as you can see. I got some Roseland sharks in with mine. You can see my three clown loaches there. I got my angel fish in here. There's a black ghost knife and striped Raphael catfish not living there. And I even got a pleco in here somewhere. They can get along with all sorts of fish just like tetras. And one plus side to them, I would say even compared to tetras, is rainbow fish, as you can see, grow considerably bigger. Thus, you don't have to worry so much about them fitting in bigger fish's mouths. However, that size can also be a little bit of a downfall as well. You gotta kinda watch how many you put of them in a 55 in particular as uh, in terms of like bio load and all that, you can get away with more, but obviously more fish requires more filtration, thus more money and attention in terms of the aquarium's maintenance and such. But as I said earlier, rainbows, if you want something that gets a little bit bigger than a tetra, but can be a lot like a tetra where they get along with all sorts of fish, they're always moving about, they're given all sorts of color all throughout the tank here. I mean, as you can see, the Bosmani rainbow back there, some uh, silverish blue and orange. Got a Madagascar rainbow, some red, silver, black, and yellow. My female millenniums that have like that goldish color to them. My male millenniums there with the red, turquoise rainbows with the blues and the white. And then my river rainbow, Australian rainbow. There are all sorts of rainbows even outside of this for you to choose that can easily fill your tank with color in no time. Number six on the list is cichlids. To those of you that might be thinking of it, yes, you could put angelfish in this group as well, as they are technically a cichlid themselves, but with this, we're focusing more on like the South Americans, the Africans, stuff like that. Before I had the Exodon Tetras in this 55 gallon tank, I had some African cichlids of all sorts. I had some uh, yellow labracromuses, I had some uh, various peacock cichlids, all sorts of them from uh, the Lake Malawi region. And uh, while it was a great tank and all that, it wasn't for me personally, but if you yourself like a uh, fish that has a little more of an attitude, like more of the aggressive kind of fish, and has all sorts of vibrant colors that match almost the vibrancy of saltwater fish, African cichlids, or really cichlids in general, could be exactly a fish to suit your fancy. And like a few other fish that I've named on this list here, cichlids are another type of fish that there's all sorts of options you can choose from. Maybe you want the Africans that you know have that vibrant color and that attitude, that aggression. Or maybe you're like, nah, you know what, those African cichlids, they're very beautiful colored, but I don't want a fish that's so aggressive. You could go on the South American side where, at least in my opinion, the fish tend to be a little more mild. That and perhaps you've done African cichlids before and are like, ah, eh, you know, yeah, it was cool, but I've done that now. I want to get something that's a little more challenging here. Which in that case, I would maybe suggest try a jewel cichlid. Of all the cichlids out there, the jewel cichlids are probably my favorite just because of the various colors they have. My female jewel cichlid here, Juliet, has some gold on her, she has those beautiful blue spots about her, as well as some red on her. And once uh, this particular jewel cichlid gets in the heat of uh, mating behavior, they can get very, very red, a beautiful radiant red even. And the one thing that's uh, really good about these guys is unlike some other cichlids that can almost grow up to a foot long sometimes, although I guess depending on what cichlid it is, that may not be as uncommon or common as you may think, these guys only grow about between five, six inches, give or take. So not too big, a pair of these would do just fine in a 55. Um, I guess you could probably do four in there comfortably until breeding behavior comes, as one downfall with jewel cichlids are, 
especially when breeding comes into play here. They get very, very territorial when they're already a pretty aggressive and territorial fish as is without the breeding factor. Number seven on the list is a live bearer tank. I know some of y'all might be thinking, I can do some live bearers in a 10. Why do I need a 55 for this? Well, by live bearer tank, I mean, instead of just only putting guppies in there, which I guess if you really wanted to, you could definitely do, and especially if you put all sorts of various kinds and species of guppies in there, it would probably look really nice too. I mean by putting, you can do guppies, you can do mollies, platies, sword tails. Um, I guess on a side note, I will say right away, is if you do choose to do sword tails with guppies, be very careful on how small the guppies are because if the guppies are small enough and your sword tails are big enough, you're probably going to see your guppy population diminish. The live bearer tank, just like a few others that I mentioned here already on the list, is another tank that's all about various color. And this might actually be the one where you can get the most color in there. And it's also on a positive out of probably any other fish that I've named on here before and will here on the last one. It's probably the fish that you can add the highest quantity of fish. Another positive I'd say about these fish is that live bears are probably one of the easiest fish out there to breed. And if you really wanted to get that tank flown with all sorts of life, all sorts of different fish in there, get you a lot of live plants and a lot of decor in that tank too to go with all the adults. And while some of the fry are still going to get eaten, there's some fry that are going to make it and just continue to load that tank with all sorts of life and color. With all that color and the reproduction though, the one downside I guess I would say that could potentially come out of live bears is especially once the babies grow up and they start to mature as well, depending on how many survive and such, the bio load in there can fluctuate a little bit. Hence, make sure you got plenty of filtration on there. If you have plenty of filtration, then this won't be so much of a problem. That and live bearers typically like to nip on those live plants as well which can prove to be a bit of a pain then if you want to raise the fry up because uh, the plants and decor like rocks and wood and all that are basically one of the lifelines for fry to be able to keep away from the adults and keep themselves from being eaten. Saying all this, I'm pretty sure live bears have been on uh, countless other tank suggestion videos, not even for just 55s, but of all sorts of sizes, but it's another one where the big reason for it. It may be simplistic, but it's a classic. And the final fish we have on the eight great fish for a 55 gallon tank is barbs. Excluding the tin foil barb, which can grow 10 inches, sometimes even closer to a foot, there are all sorts of barbs out there that would be perfect for a 55 gallon tank. Just like tetras, barbs are another fish that like to swim around in groups, and it's truly an alluring thing to watch. As you can see with the tiger barbs here, inside my 36 gallon bow front tank, I have three different species of tiger barbs specifically. I have green tiger barbs, albino tiger barbs, the one that are orange with white stripes, and then your typical tiger barbs here have like the semi-orangish white with those black stripes and those very beautiful orange fins there that I think uh, go unnoticed just because they're usually pretty small. and. Uh, the cool thing about barbs, kind of like tetras, is they don't get very big typically. Specifically here, the tiger barbs usually max out about three to four inches and just like the majority of the other fish I've named on this list, they're a tropical water fish, pretty easy to care for. They'll accept freeze dried foods, flake foods, frozen foods, all sorts of stuff. So they're easy to feed. And as long as you just don't let the parameters go totally crazy, they're pretty easy to care for. Which is all definitely a plus because then just like tetras and probably even the live bears, barbs are a pretty good beginner fish. One con in my opinion, or I guess at least my word of caution is, barbs, unlike tetras or even live bears, tend to be more fin nippers. Hence, that can be a little bit of a problem because obviously if they nip the fins of other fish too much, that can lead to health problems for other fish. So be careful on what all fish you put it with them. You don't want anything that's too long fin and slow swimming. Otherwise, it's probably not gonna work very well with these guys. But if you just put other barbs with them or other fast swimming fish, or more so even just make sure there's plenty of space for everybody to swim around, don't overstock the tank, and have plenty of things 
where folks can get away from each other, when a couple of the fish get a little restless towards each other, then everything in your barb tank should turn out pretty swell. Another pro to these is that there's all sorts of different colors and shapes of barbs, kind of like Tetris. If you don't want the wider body that are like the uh, checker barbs or the tiger barbs I just shown you, there's also ones out there like cherry barbs as I show here. It's another fast swimming fish and these ones especially get even smaller than what tiger barbs do. So the cool thing is depending on what barb you get, kind of like the tetras or even the live bearers, this is another fish that you can put higher quantities into the tank compared to the other fish that I've named here on the list. And it's another species where if you want to put multiple species in there, have right at it. That fish, folk, is my eight great fish for a 55-gallon tank. Let me know what you think of these suggestions. Did any of them uh, really speak to you? Do you have a suggestion of your own? Go ahead and let me know in the comments below. And if you like this little eight great video here, got a couple ideas, or maybe you're thinking of now getting a 55 with some of these suggestions, or just like the video in some shape, way, or form, Give this video a thumbs up, and as always, folks, if you haven't done so already, and if you're somewhat new to my channel, please consider clicking the subscribe button to stay in the loop with everything I do, from videos such as this, fish reveals, got some more projects going on down here in the fish room, all sorts of awesome things, planning some trips here down the road here relatively soon, great stuff ahead here. As always, thank you very much for watching my video and all the continuous support all of you give. Obviously. Eclipse the 600 subscriber mark here not too long ago. Each and every one of you are awesome. Thank you so much for all the support here and all that you do, or at least considering to keep me in your circle of all the folks here on YouTube. It truly means a lot to me. But with that said, again, thank you for watching my video and all the continued support, and I will see you all in the next video. Stay fantastic. <laughs>